So here we go. Garden update time. How are things growing? That is the question, right? Coming up, nothing up the trellises yet. That soon will change. We're gonna take a quick peek. But it's May and there are green things. Green strange things coming up out of the ground. <laughs> Crazy update here. Um, looking at the art here first. Okay, this is my May garden tour. This is the second half of the video I did yesterday in my greenhouse. And um, first of all, I want to be very thankful that I have a fence around my garden. If I didn't, I think my chickens would have unearthed absolutely everything that I've planted so far. And then I wouldn't just be fighting the slugs, I'd be fighting them. Every once in a while they get in here, whew, yes. So I am actually, because I'm a flower person too, which I love that there's flowers everywhere in my yard. Spring is definitely here. Um, roses over there coming on strong. Um, I'm actually, me and my husband are making plans to figure out some kind of chicken tractor because I love free ranging them and I think they're so fun to watch, but they are scratching the heck out of all my baby flowers. And it's just, you can't have both in the same space. So I do put my chickens up, but then I get sad for them and I let them out. So I gotta kind of come up with this compromise. See my little teenagers? So I'm gonna clean out my chicken pen and, and put in fresh bedding and mulch and then put these eyes ones in with the big mama ones because they all have to figure out how to get along. She is a pain in the patootie. She's a bully. Chicken yard bully, right? That whole um, pecking order thing is a real thing. So I'm just going to give a quick update. Um, I am trying to see if the um, uh, back, to gar back to Eden gardening is still an experiment. I'm one year in as of February, so I'm a little over a year. And so this is my first spring with an established back to Eden garden and I am trying to put things out earlier. So normally I wouldn't put peppers and tomatoes out for a couple of weeks. And, um, and I've been putting them out and you'll see 50-50 success, 50-50 not success. <laughs> You'll see why. It has to do with the slugs. It's all about the slugs, not the sunshine. I do have my tomatoes out. Um, I started them way too early in my house and I do not repent of that because quite frankly, I needed the green and I needed the sunshine of having green things in my garden. And um, uh, <laughs> so I don't repent it. But it did mean that my tomatoes had a little bit of a catch up, to turn around catch up when I planted them out. They weren't very hardy. So let's look at this. Let's look at this garden. Okay, so we'll move kind of fast. So I have planted scarlet runner beans and not scarlet runner beans, um, noodle beans here like three or four times. So I'm kind of wondering if my package of beans was actually vi valid, which, you know, that can happen. So, um, here is peppers that I started, but as you can see, slugs killed that one, slugs killed that one, and we're constantly fighting to keep up with slugs and chickens. And, oops, sorry. And here we have uh, scouts, uh, shallots, shallots, and these are potatoes that came back from last year, but back in there I have some peas. I'm kind of going with the whole wild uh, um, everywhere look. My carrots, I might actually get carrots this year. Last year, was the, that was when I figured out the slugs were eating them. So here is zucchini. Um, and this one did get hit by a little bit of cool weather first and then slug second. So I'm actually pretty proud of it for pulling through more random potatoes, which I'm just gonna pull these up and eat them like new potatoes in another couple of weeks here because there's too many of them. But you know, why not? So this little guy got scratched by the chickens. Man, they just really have some adversity. So here is my, um, I have piles, compost piles in both corners. I know, lovely, right? And my dog is eating my chicken's food. Get out, Cindy, go on, go on. And um, chickens are like, hey, you're feeding them something. Let's go see. But I'm gonna scrape out the litter in here and put it on top of this. And then the um, grass clippings will get added on top of that later and I'll put a fresh round in there. So this is gonna be such good stuff. Sometimes I throw the stuff be below the rabbits on there too, so it's pretty cool. And my mama rabbit has new babies, so yay for that. Okay, so here's the tomato update. And I did start to notice that I have 
some tomatoes that are coming up wild from last year, like that one right there is a little wild. Here we go. I didn't want to do my tomato cages that I had last year um, because they're just unwieldy. So these, so I am gonna try to stake them up with these metal posts. I have a ton of them, so I can literally do one or two per tomato and not run out. And, and then I can tie them up. So it'll look a little bit like that, but I know that when they get up and mature, they'll probably be just fine. Um, marigolds that I started from seed, garlic in here. Look at that pot of tomatoes that's coming up from seed there. There's a lot of them. See, here's another random one, which I don't know if I'm gonna let some of those stay or not. We'll just keep going with the flow here. And I really love that I have spinach and bok choy. I actually have harvested and eaten a lot of that, which this stuff goes to seed. So I tried today to, to take the, the flower heads off to see if it makes them fatter um, or not. And then, so here's some more peppers. Pepper people, if you plant jalapeno peppers next to sweet peppers, does the jalapeno pepper cross pollinate and make the sweet pepper hot? Good question to ask, right? When this came up from last year, this organically came up, but it looks like something I'm supposed to know. Does anybody know what that is? It's kind of a pretty bush, but I have no idea if it's something I should keep or not. So I did get some zinnias in here and some nasturtiums. I've planted these beans several times too, and I know the slugs got them once. These are my only two survivors right here from the first round, and none of, I haven't seen them pop their heads through on the second planting yet, but we'll see. I'm excited about this. I always get excited when the little seeds start coming through. Yay! I did some celery that I started. I planted that out. That's charred. These are the um, parsnips. I don't even know if I like parsnips. We'll find out. And then um, my oldest son that graduated from college that I'll probably put some footage of um, on here because he had an event this week. But he um, he has a sweetheart and her name is Serenity and she actually likes to do this garden thing. So she helped me plant those out. And um, there's more down in here. She helped me plant the marigolds in with the tomatoes and some of the replanted some of the beans. Here's my brassicas that I replanted so many times. I will have to wait till they're big to see which one's which, but they're finally up taller than the slugs. So I feel like these will be a success. It's still cool enough here that I won't lose them. This is cilantro in here. And these were, um, I had carrots and bok choy and different lettuces. Some have gone, mustard has gone to seed, but I still keep coming in here and just picking and it's kind of pretty, look at that. It's almost like a bouquet right there on the ground. And then I do have some beans coming up. There's an occasional weed there. That's a back to, our, back to Eden garden kind of weed right there. You're just gonna pull them suckers out. No biggie right there. Um, more here. My peas are up and growing strong. I've been eating them right off here. So fun and yummy. And that's a random potato. I don't even know how that one got there because it wasn't there last year. And I have so many mushrooms. I'm so afraid of mushrooms. There's so many in my garden, and but I have no idea if they're poisonous or not. Just say no to killing your family, right? <laughs> Poisoning your family. So I kind of tended this. These are carrots here, and this was radishes. I actually planted another round of all of them, so they come in thick. And that one is fennel out there. And then I put some celery that I had started in between. But I'm always so excited when the, when the seedlings start coming. So there's seedling. So I'll let this come up and get real established. Look at, there's some right there. And when they get up and established, then I'll kind of tuck in some grass clippings around it to protect it. Um, some more. So that's, uh, I think that's shard right there. And over there is some more kale that I added in. These are all from my greenhouse things that I started. And here is uh, parsley. Actually, I might have the parsley and the cilantro backwards. But tomatillo looks a little orange. I'm thinking it's a little bit waterlogged. It's been very wet and rainy. That's the spinach over there. Different cabbages. This is where I ate my shout, my garlic scapes. See that, isn't that pretty? And these are the, um, not tomatillos, these are 
ground cherries, which I've never had before. Some beets neighboring. Might have those too close together. And these potatoes were planted on purpose. Um, when I was planting the ground cherries, I accidentally harvested a few, so I need to get those inside. They don't look very appetizing laying there in the ground, but those will be yummy. <laughs> Slicing cucumbers. Those ones might make it through the slugs. Beets. These are the ones I keep planting over and over and over again. Those are different kinds of cucumbers, and man, are they hard to keep alive. So, um, look at these mushrooms, you guys. What the heck? There's so many of them. They, they're, they look like science fiction stuff, you know, when they come up and change. But these are the scarlet runner beans that I planted at the same time as the noodle beans, and they're actually coming up. And um, they are kind of thin, so I planted them again, and I just have to think that has to do with the colder weather. So hopefully some of my other ones come up. I don't have anything planted along this back fence. I'm going to try to scrape off the top layer and plant corn wide here so that it's the backdrop blocking the lovely neighbor view, <laughs> which is not so lovely. And I don't have anything planted in here yet on purpose anyways. But look at this. I was looking at my videos. These were so small last year, even in August. But look, I got artichokes coming. Aren't those pretty? Oh, they make me happy. Ooh, I planted something in here. I can't remember. I didn't mark it. But I saw that it was coming up. If I look real close, there's little seeds that are germinating. So the germination part seems to be happening a little bit faster as we've gotten warmer. And this is some more peppers and some um, basil on the corner there. And that these bigger tall ones are, char are shard from last year. That probably needs to come out. But my rabbits will eat them and think they're lovely eggplants and um, some bok toys that got hung, hung over and then these if these make it that's actually tiny little basil there but my my snow peas are coming in finally you know how long it took those guys to come through so it means that my soil is is slower to warm up than I'm giving it credit for grapes are coming on which I think these are miniature baby grapes which that makes me excited Yay. And that's pretty much the garden tour. My rose beds, my roses are on full on beautiful. So maybe I'll go show you those really quick. It's not quite in here. Um, I have some newbie friends that are checking out, that are doing um, new gardens. And so I'm actually really loving sharing different things. Oh, and I have to update you on the food forest. There's been some change there. So let's go see that. So um, my mom wanted to have a rose garden. Her dad was a champion rose um, grower. <laughs> I don't know. He actually showed them and then he was so good at it, he judged for a long time. And so we wanted to have one. She wanted to have one. I have always wanted to have one, just didn't want to spend the money and get all invested in it because the roses seem kind of complicated. But um, my mom can't get them at her house because she doesn't have a fenced yard and she deals with deer. And I don't know if you've ever had deer in your flower beds. But when it comes to rosins, they put it, they're pretty much an hors d'oeuvre. They come in and eat everything. So um, last year we had two of these rose bushes. I'll show you which one. And all the rest of them are new. And I've showed some updates along the way. And um, But here's a new one. And they're starting to bloom and they smell so good. So these two um, were here last year. But these are just looking so healthy. These are the ones that just smell. Look how big that rose head is. So good. Um, with the honeysuckle backdrop, butterfly bush there. This is an evergreen clematis that's already bloomed and smells super good. There's behind Mimu the cat, fat cat, is a um, carnation, a miniature carnation, if the chickens don't scratch it to death. And these are my new ones from this year. Thank you, Mom, for investing. So I have um, five new bushes, and it, looked, it actually has a bud on it already. I'm curious to see what colors these will be and if they smell good. But all of these were planted last year and look at they're already coming. This is Oregon is so pretty when it takes off. And I'm so, so super excited about these. These are matchsticks or fire pokers. And I got these two bushes new last year and so they're just getting started. Um, but I'm a bird lover and the um, cedar waxwings birds really love them. And just look at that, look how cool they are. I mean, they're just so particularly beautiful. So we have a rose hedge. Ooh, but I'll show you guys. You know, I keep talking about slugmageddon. It's really hard to see. 
but let me show you. They really love my dahlias. See these little dahlias? These are gonna get up nice and tall and grow big. But man, do they have, they get hammered by the slugs on their way up out of the ground. Oh, the ones over there are kind of eaten down to nubs. So time for a food forest update. So we have gotten a couple piles of this. This one's brand new. So this one has already gone and come back since one of my last videos. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to video this so you can actually see. My little walkway, that's actually the point. So I had this walkway, you guys have seen it before, with my um, pear tree there, peach tree. Whoa, where is it at? Right there. <laughs> and, whoa, don't get dizzy on me. And then there's another, this is a multiple, um, you know where they graft the multiple things in here. I've shown you before, the gooseberries, the currants, and all of that. But what you haven't seen is the extension of my path. Do you see how it goes all the way back there now? Ah. Okay, so when you have a husband who's got beefcake muscles, he just, he took on the wheelbarrow like a stud and did a whole um, pile of that mulch in like one afternoon and um, helped me get this done. So I, watch me trip and fall over one of these things. So I'm looking forward to slowly, this will all get covered in and it'll take a while to actually get a handle on the um, ivy and the stickers and everything else that grow up. But one thing at a time, this is looking pretty cool. Um, so this gives me access back here to my strawberry bed that's right there, see? But you walk around, my goal was to make it so that I could actually kind of walk and keep going around and access different places and it's worked out pretty beautifully. I was out here the other day and I planted um, right here, I planted some more artichokes because they're just cool. And then down here I planted some mint. Can you see that little box right there? There's just mint. So I'm expecting that to kind of grow up and wild. And my idea is that somewhere back in here or right here, I will um, prepare to do my bees so that I kind of want to have even more uh, wild herbs. I want to have a ton of herbs that are grown up um, that you can just kind of winter over every year and not have to worry about them overtaking their space and things like that because then they would just be bee food. Um, so this goes all the way along the fence line all the way back to the behind the honeysuckle and back around to the other place and it's just so pretty. It's just so pretty. It's kind of coming around. It's kind of looking productive back here. Yay! I almost forgot. I got mail, YouTube mail. <laughs> I'm used to book girl mail, like, um, but this is YouTube mail. And look, it's actually pretty cool. Um, one of my new YouTuber friends, Tambra Doug, um, Duggar, actually sent me um, coxcomb seeds and some um, either zinnia, zinnia seeds. Yeah, the zinnia. So, and she gave me the directions to use them and. Um, Weed swap seeds. I sent her some too. And I don't know, I think this is great. <laughs> so if any of you have an abundance of some kind of seed or something you think would maybe be an addition to what you see on my channel, I would love to trade. The one thing I have is um, really big, tall, like huge, tall sunflower seeds. I harvested some sunflower seeds off of that and um, I know they're viable because I've been planting them. And um, so if you have some of those you want to trade, the one thing I'm kind of wishing I had right now that I bought and planted and the slugs ate and now I have to go buy again because they don't give you very many is the really, really big pumpkins, like the gigantic ones. I know they're probably already supposed to be started for this time of year, but I really want to do that. So if anybody has extra huge pumpkins, like the kind they used to show at the state fair and all that, I really want to get some started. And the reason I set up right here is because I wanted to tell you about two more things really fast. Um, my, one of my goals for this year was to be able to have a variety of flowers, cut flowers in my house um, at any given time. And so at the end of this video, I was gonna show you some um, bouquets that I've made already. My um, son and my niece had a graduation from college party here at the house and we used flowers to decorate in the middle of May and I can't even tell you how fun it was to have all of this beauty to pick from and so you'll see some videos or pictures probably of that at the end here and the other reason I sat here is because I wanted to talk about this area back here so um, there's a creek back here and I've shown that in other videos maybe um, 
I'll show it in future ones too. But across the creek has always been an old nursery where people were growing um, decorative bushes and plants and it had gone crazy wild and had been left a long time. Um, it had flooded one year, so the other side of the creek is very low. And so when we had a huge water increase one year, it flooded out the backside and wiped out a whole bunch of their nursery. And then they just never tended it after that. So it's been kind of wild. Well, in the last two weeks or so, they have it completely groomed from clear over on this side to clear over on this side. And um, I believe they're going to put in a crop. And um, I think it looks beautiful. It's all manicured and gorgeous. It's our view. I believe they're growing pot. Um, there's a pot manufacturing company right over here where they, where they have the building where they can extract the medicinal properties. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but very legal here in Oregon, quite a booming industry here in Oregon, quite a flooded market if you ask me here in Oregon from what I see. Um, but I believe that's what we'll have over here. So when I think about having bees and stuff in the future, I think, hmm, odds are pretty good we're going to have enough flower blooms. What do you guys think? <laughs> so um, addition to the backyard landscape, I wish I would have um, started just a little bit sooner because I caught a coyote running across the field over there. He was looking for field mice and bunny rabbits. And so I don't know if he was successful. I quit watching. But updates. Thank you for watching this very long YouTube garden tour of my Back to Eden Garden. Kara Grandel here. I would love it if you subscribe, but more so I would love it if you'd interact with me and ask questions. It's kind of fun hanging out with you. See you later. Bye. From here to the end of the video, you'll see a bunch of random stuff, some garden related and some not. First, my kids came up with this crazy way to feed the ducks. Except for that dumb one that's looking around. There's literally millions of them. Oh, that was oh, one finally got in. The Yum. Oh, wait, this, they're almost done. Yep. Did they get the big one already? Yeah. Dave, yeah. that one's hanging out. That one's going to be the fatty. He was smart enough to get in there. <laughs> he ate like three times as much as everybody else. Yeah. They, that's like fast food, man. Oh, there's still one. Nope, they're gone. <laughs> All gone. Oh my gosh. Elizabeth, the baby of the family, took fifth in state for high jump. She jumped 5'2", and she's only a freshman. Benjamin and my niece Miranda graduated from college this year, and here's a picture of Serenity, the one that helped me in the garden. We had this um, gathering where we brought in a bunch of family. I mean, it was huge. There was a ton of people. And look at all of the bouquets that we did. They were so pretty. We had people everywhere. And so I had to go around and take pictures so you guys could see it before they um, blooms from my yard, before they got all wilted and everything. Um, the next thing is that son, Benjamin, the oldest, he took a trip to Taiwan and then down to the Philippines, and him and his basketball team were doing um, a mission, a short mission trip, and helping in the community in both places. It's pretty cute to see all of that happen. And he took pictures of flowers from these exotic places. Look at that orchid and the other stuff. I don't have a clue what that is, but it's pretty beautiful. And then, of course, da da da. And more flowers. And then my daughter, Debbie, who's number three, she has been home from college and she has a business. She has an Etsy store where she does um, bereavement and gift arts where she paints rocks to look exactly like people's pets. And I figured I would give you guys a connection there just in case that's something one of you guys wants to check out. And she's um, using it as a way to make spending money while she works her way through school. And this hoary hoary or... Knock off Hori Hori was my Mother's Day present. So the blooms are still green. Look at these. They're starting to go. Starting to go. Get all pretty. You know, so pretty. I always like the um, symmetry of the flowers. Like, it's almost like math, even though I'm not a huge fat math guru. When they actually bloom out and there's something symmetrical about them. and in design and I just think it's cool. 
my snowball bush. I pruned it so big last year, it didn't bloom at all, so it's been two years. <laughs>